like every time Raw is in London, that crowd just makes the show that much better. It's either the London crowd or the crowd the night after WrestleMania. It's those two crowds that really, really get the show into it and it lets everyone have it that needs to be cheered or booed or whatever. But more on that a little bit later. Hello everyone, the theme here, and I'm here to bring you the raw report, opinions, review, from my standpoint. So, the show opens with Dean Ambrose. So, yeah, you had the Ambrose Asylum thing talk show last week, and now you have it this week. Shane McMahon is still in charge. Still in charge. Yeah, so Dean goes out there and, you know, he does his usual stick, cracks a couple of jokes, even joked about Braun Strowman. No Wyatt's this week. Hmm. Oh, well. But, yeah. Um, then he introduced Shane O'Mac. And the basic thing about Shane O'Mac is that, he, you know, yeah, his, uh, he's on borrowed time, so to speak. And then they ask, he, uh, Ambrose asks him a question, talking about, yeah, so what are you going to do? And Shane is like, it's all about opportunity here. Opportunities for guys like AJ Styles, Sami Zayn. So interrupts Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is like, oh, no, you got something against me. Uh, you shouldn't have escorted me out last week. Uh, you have something against me. Uh, you're a McMahon with power. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that shit. <laughs> All right, Kevin Owens. Yeah, work with the crowd. He said it's still the same old stuff from before, a McMahon in power holding people back and so on and so forth. Yeah, work that, okay? That, all right, and it led up to a couple more things. So, yeah, so after that happened, yeah, and Sami Zayn, of course, he had a couple of comments about Sami Zayn. He's like, yeah, he's been riding my coattails, da 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 Sami Zayn comes out, he's like, look, I ride here first. I got signed here first. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, you've been betraying friends and stabbing people in the back and da 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 Out comes Jericho. Now, <laughs> It, it, it was pretty interesting when Jericho came out. He, he, he put over Owens as far as, you're the only smart person in the ring, and uh, you're telling the truth about Shane McMahon. And, okay, we all knew where this was going, and we already knew that these matches were going to take place at WWE Payback anyway. So Shane announces the matches for WWE Payback. It will be Kevin Owens against Sami Zayn and Jericho against Ambrose. Cool, all right? I'm all for that. But we all knew it was coming, just honestly. So after that, Jericho goes against Sami Zayn in a good match. And Jericho ended up poking the eye, giving him the cold breaker, and, be and ended up beating Sami Zayn. You see, that is how you work as a heel. Alone. Yes, heels, cheat, and, and do all kinds of things. That's fine, as long as it's alone. Because... Even if you cheat and you're still alone, you're still earning credibility as far as you being by yourself and being able to take care of that shit alone. Anyone that's a Miz Jizz fan, please understand that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so that's how Jericho won his match. So, yeah, take that, Jizz. That's how it's done. So AJ Styles has an interview, and it's basically cut off. He didn't really say anything, and he's interrupted and introduces... <laughs> Anderson and Gallows. Yes, they are close friends, and they were um, in New Japan, and they work together, and so on and so forth. Many people are predicting that Anderson and Gallows and Styles are going to be a group. Now, they kind of hinted at that in this in this freaking event, in, in, in on this episode of Raw. They kind of hinted at that, and I like it, because it puts more into it, but at the same time, Nobody, it doesn't really mean anything except let's dethrone these motherfuckers because we don't like them. That's basically what they're going for here. I understand that they're going for that, but they have no choice. They, they can't make it anything else. They, they just can't. The Usos, the Flying Roman Reigns, and, and Roman himself, nobody wants them at the fucking top. So AJ Styles, Gallows, and Anderson, that may be a good thing if they pull the fucking trigger. So, yeah, you have Enos and Cass beat the Dudley boys to advance in the tournament. Duh. Who thought that the Dudleys were going to win this? Seriously. 
this is more of an out with the old, in with the new, or giving you what you want type of thing, with a couple of exceptions, ever since Shane McMahon took over. So, and it's kind of confusing of what or when they're going to have that final tag team match to advance to the actual number one contenders, and more on that in a bit. Reigns... <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> he comes out to massive boos. AJ Styles comes out. Yeah, we, we already know that who's picking sides here. I mean, come on. Many people hate Roman Reigns because, of course, many people feel that feel, feel that he will shove down everybody's throat when actually in actuality, no one's being shoved down your throat. You can always click. You can always not go online. You can always go away for a little bit, let their money drop, and then, it's, anyway. <sighs> it was a little, kind of, uh, range with this damn microphone, it's just, anyway. <laughs> the point of the segment was Anderson and Gallows attacking Roman, and AJ Styles looking confused. Now, I like where that's going. I like the way they led to that. I like that because we're not, they trying to say that, okay, yeah. They're not stupid. Let's feed them that bone. But are they going to do that for payback? Are these motherfuckers going to come out and then the ooblows come out? Because the fact because the fact is, Gallows and Anderson have nothing. They're not even in a tag team tournament. They have nothing. And now, since what happened with the Usos in this broadcast, they have nothing. And more on that in a bit. Are you going to pull that trigger? Are they going to have these three motherfuckers that we're all going to boo to hell against AJ Styles, Anderson, and Gallows? Who knows? But the point is that Anderson and Gallows attack Roman Reigns, and then there was a backstage se segment. Uh, I have nothing to do with it. Uh, yeah, you can bring them all on. Come on, that shit. This has been done many times before, but at least this is done with a little bit of meaning. We all want Roman Reigns to be dethroned here. Okay, I can't say we all, because there may be some Roman Reigns fans out there. But at the end of the day, the vast majority of grown-up guys want Roman Reigns dethroned as soon as possible. Especially with someone like AJ Styles. So, yeah. You had Corbin. Ugh. Okay, the Lone Wolf versus Fandango. Did anyone think that Fandango had a chance of winning this match? No. So, yeah, he ends up beating Fandango. And during the match, Ziggler gets knocked. And then Ziggler attach, attacks Corbin after the match and didn't get the upper hand. I like that. Let this man be an actual threat on his own and stand his ground. I like that. Please keep it that way. Have a match at Payback where he goes over Ziggler. Because Ziggler, oh, yeah, he sold that shit. He sold a lot of it. <laughs> but he's the leading seller in WWE. Huh. Make that match, please. So, you get the Jizz show. Ugh. Cesaro comes out. And Cesaro is not one that should be on the microphone. But he's still out mic the Jizz. Okay? So... Of course, Jizz run, 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 run away. And then, he, you know, Rusev against Cesaro. Uh-uh-uh. So it's going to be the League of Nations and that Jizz against Cesaro and all London. Don't you dare be sour. Now, look, London, I think that's the loudest that they that anyone that any crowd has ever repeated the new day. I think that London had, was the loudest. And the, New Day didn't have to say anything on the microphone. They just came out and they did their, their hip shaking and their clapping and, 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 you know, Francesca being played. You see, <laughs> Francesca has more mic skills than The Miz. But, yeah, that took place and that was pretty fucking cool. So, they end up beating. The, the League of Nations got beat. The Jizz got beat, and the Jizz hardly did anything in the fucking match again. Even when the whole signature thing was going on, the Jizz didn't even participate because he got reversed into that fucking big ending, which was cool because it was like, all right, no one takes that fucking dick-licking finale seriously. No. But it's good that the New Day and Cesaro won. Yeah. New Day rocks. New 
<laughs> they started doing this whole Cesaro thing. Cesaro, please win the Intercontinental Championship. Please. Please. <laughs> so, it is now announced that Natty, Natalya Neidhart, will have Bret the Hitman Hart in her corner at WWE Payback when she goes against Charlotte. And there was an eight-woman tag team matchup. Oh, uh, Total Bellas? Why? Uh, Total Bellas? Anyway, eight-woman tag team match, and it was Natty. And, and, okay, look, they left a couple of, okay, they left one diva out in particular, in my opinion, but it was Natty. It was Charlotte. No. That, 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 it was Natty. <laughs> it was Sasha. It was Becky, and it was Paige. Yeah, for her home, her, yeah, her home crowd against Tamina. Why is Tamina in this match? It should have been Emma. And uh, Naomi, are you serious? She's still there. Ugh. Then you have Charlotte, and then you have Summer. Right? Summer? Come on, man. <laughs> no. So Charlotte taps out to the sharpshooter. Well, got. I mean, come on. Who else is going to lose that? Everybody else in that match on Charlotte's team was just no business being there, in my opinion. They just didn't. So, yeah, if that happens at Payback, we'll have a new WWE Women's Champion. Bad chance of that, though. I don't know. Bret Hart being in the corner. I don't know. It may happen. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so the Usos. The Bald Villain. The bald villains beat the Usos. Who didn't see that coming? Yeah, it's good that the flying Roman reigns are out. The flying Romans are out. It's good because we don't want to see them in the fucking title. We don't want to see them in the tag team picture. We don't want to see them winning the ta tag team champions no more. We just don't want to see that. Now, Innocent Cast against the bald villains at payback at the actual event, and then they go face the New Day. I'm wondering why they're doing it like that. There's a there's a report that that's actually happening that way. Why can't they have the final fucking finals next week on Raw? And then having Enos and Cass and the New Day, Mike Wars. Do that shit instead, because that would be fucking epic. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. You can't teach that. Yeah, New Day rocks. You can't teach that. Have that shit come take fucking place, please. Instead of having to meet, having the finals at the pay per view and then meeting at the no, there's no conference, there's no build up, please. Uh, anyway, Apollo Crews versus Heath Slater. Uh, uh, again, who thought that fucking Heath Slater was gonna win? He's just a female. He's just a male Jillian Hall. Okay, they have a lot of similarities as far as yes, he's the male Jillian Hall. Hmm. No, Adam Rose. Yeah, Adam Rose is suspended for the, the wellness policy. So is Connor from the Ascension. Oh, come on. It's funny how these guys were never doing anything in the fucking first place, so we won't miss them. But it's like, uh shit. Why the fuck would you make a silly fucking mistake like that? It's it's just silly, okay? Yeah. It's it looks like Apollo Cruz is becoming well. Uh, we can't even take him seriously yet. Yes, he's a good athlete, but he needs to talk on the mic. He needs to do something else. His ring skills are only going to take him so far. They're not going to Goldberg him. They're not even going to Rusev him. They're not going to do any of that because there's nowhere for, there's no, there's no ceiling to break. He's not even near it. He's just, yeah. It's funny how uh, I see that Apollo Crews is becoming the next Titus O'Neil in that fashion. <laughs> in that fashion. They just, Remind me of the same type of motherfucking wrestler. They just do, except Apollo is a little bit more athletic with his backflips and shit. But anyway, huh? So Ambrose versus Owens, where Dean Ambrose actually wins in a pretty good match. They had a hell of a few, and then Jericho hit that cold breaker on Dean Ambrose, and that the show ends like that. Now look, 
Good buildup. That was a good buildup. Because it's like, all right, look, they left and they didn't have Roman come out there. All right, all right, I won't mention him anymore. But that was a good ending to the show. Who knows what's going to happen on SmackDown? Is there going to be any type of payback from, you know, pun intended? But yeah, um, Raw is stepping up a bit. Not only with what's going on, but with the action. I do give it credit. They have a long way to go here. But in my opinion, at least they're going in the right fucking direction. They just need a couple of things. They, they need a couple of title changes. They, that's what they need. They, they just do, okay? But, yeah, so that was um, the show, and those are my opinions from the show. If you have any questions, comments, feel free. I would like to hear your opinions. You know, click, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, click subscribe. I will welcome that. Comments, opinions, please. So, yeah, drop kicks, body slams, throwing motherfuckers over the top rope. Both feet hitting the floor. Yes, I'm a wrestling fan. Duh. This is the theme, and I'll see you later. Credits.